Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of the Aurelia City from City Skylines. Today's episode is going to be all about finishing stuff. We will complete the big office and commercial complex construction site and also we will add some parking to the sports center that we built a couple of episodes back, so finishing that project as well. And by doing all that, we will totally complete this entire part of the city next to the river, so let's get to it. We are going to start with the sports center and just finishing the entire area around the sports center that we kept empty. Now, I'm first going to show you some time-lapse shots that I recorded even before the previous episode, and you could have seen some results actually in the cinematics for the previous episodes, but I just decided to go back in time slightly and just show you how I did all of these things in here, just so it makes more sense and it's uh, all together, right? So, as you can see, I'm also building this, uh, this pedestrian connection, like a tunnel underneath the highway and the main road, and uh, this pedestrian connection is going to be very important because it's going to connect the park and to the stadium. Now, obviously that doesn't really make much sense because there's probably not going to be much people walking from the park to a stadium, but if you live on the opposite side of the big park and you just want to take a walk uh, all the way to the stadium, to the river maybe, or maybe even to the shopping center, then you definitely are going to use this path. And there are also the, the trams all around this, uh, this path or any kind of public transport, so it also makes sense to connect it there. And obviously we want to have as many connections to the stadium as possible. Now, that also means that we need to finish this road that's uh, coming from that uh, residential hill area. A long time ago we built that project and we had this road just going over the highway kind of blindly and I was just waiting for, you know, the stuff on this part of the highway next to the river to finish it. So that's exactly why I built that loop because there's quite a lot of elevation that we need to cover in here so there has to be some kind of a loop and uh, just uh, connect that road down to the level where the stadium is. Now, like I said, in the episode where I built that uh, sports center area, I completely did not do any parking and parking lots and stuff like that, right? I only did the public transport and just the basic area. But uh, we also need to include some parking. I know that I said that I don't really want to do like big parking and all of it is, is going to be mostly underground. So that's exactly that what's happening over here. I'm not going to put, uh, you know, the parking roads or parking spaces like everywhere underneath this place. I'm just going to make it on the edges in here just so it's visible and we can just, you know, use our imagination to think that the rest of the parking spots are underneath the stadiums and under underneath this entire open area for the sports center, right? Even though the parking lots don't need to be like super huge with, like for example with some American stadiums, because uh, this sports center is mostly, mostly, mostly built with public transport in mind, and that's why there's, you know, the buses, I'm actually going to put buses later, but trams, uh, two lines of trams actually, if you count the one in the park as well, that we built the path towards it and uh, the trains. There is a train station as well. So there's not going to be that much need for huge parking lots, but there still will be these underground ones, right? So I'm going to build two entrances to the parking lots. And as you can see, I'm also keeping them open on uh, on this on the edges of the sports center area by doing these, uh, these uh, I'm not sure how to call them, just these pillars. With, uh, with the roofs, with the concrete roofs, so that some of the parking lots are going to be visible. I intentionally just left the, the simulation running for a couple of hours so that maybe the parking lots are going to be actually populated with some cars, but unfortunately people just didn't want to park there too much. There's only a couple of cars parked there, so you'll probably see that in the cinematic. And I definitely like how it looks like, how uh, how you can just see the cars uh, through these little openings and you can it's just it's just giving you the idea that or the the impression that there's probably a bigger parking lot underneath that place. So I'm going to build two parking lots uh, or two entrances to the parking lot. So first one is going to be that the one that I just finished and that was the one from the main street but there's also going to be this one for people probably arriving from inside the city towards the stadium because that main street is probably going to be an entrance for people maybe even outside the city because uh, that main street is uh, basically just a couple of hundred meters from a highway exit. So, you know, that makes sense that they will enter there and park there. 
but uh, people going from inside the city, probably across the big park, for example, or the residential hill area and all that, uh, if they don't want to use the public transport, they can just drive here and use that loop that I built and loop again uh, into, the, into the level of the garages. And I'm doing just the same detailing on this side. So these pillars with the concrete roof and uh, just so we can see like the first row of the parking spot. So a very, very, very easy build, a very easy build to do for these uh, parking lots, but um, you know, a very effective one because it's just giving you the impression that there's probably a bigger parking lot underneath this place, but uh, it's looking good. It's looking really, really good. So a bus station like you'd have seen, I just used the same detailing as I did with that uh, a previous bus station that I built with that light rail station a um, couple of episodes back. Uh, so nothing exactly fancy. There's going to be the line of buses that goes then towards, uh, well, even the light rail station area that I built, that I talked about. And uh, I decided to merge two lines together. So if you remember when we were building that uh, like a wide uh, wide road for for pedestrians then i also like a long time ago i also built a bus line there and uh, that's going to be a bus line that uh, i will merge to this area so it's just going to be one huge bus line one really long bus line that's going to go uh, all the way to uh, all the way to when it's finished it's going to be going to go all the way to the lake where the island city is and on the other side it's going to go to the downtown and probably even past the downtown and so on into some different areas of the city when I'm uh, when I'm going to be finishing them later all right so it's definitely the longest bus line in the city and uh, right now it's actually the only bus line in the city that has uh, the normal buses I don't really count the the small Oli buses as uh, like proper bus lines right and there's quite a lot of those in the city anyway we are finished with the sports center area i'm not really showing those uh, other details that i did around the place uh, mostly just covering it with some details like trees and all that but uh, we are now going to concentrate on the construction site because that's the project that we started last episode and i only built uh, one half of the construction site and only roughly right i didn't do any detailing or you know cranes for example or just decals on the ground I, i'm going to do that do that all today so the second half of the construction site is going to is going to have two buildings it's going to have buildings these egg-shaped buildings i really wanted to just have some more interesting shapes to these buildings to just uh, i don't know indicate that they are probably like futuristic offices something like that and uh, they are going to be very tall uh, not exactly above the surface level, but they are definitely going to go very deep underneath the surface. Uh, because I already had the the, the construction site uh, excavated quite deep in this area, and I really wanted to do something, some kind of a large structure in there. I'm not sure how many floors is it uh, below the surface, maybe like five floors even. So it might be some parking lots, sure, but uh, I'm mostly thinking that it might be some like computer mainframe or something like server rooms maybe uh, or maybe some secret uh, government laboratories or you know something like that right so it's just going to be a very huge building but not all of it is going to be visible from the surface now as you can see i'm uh, doing the same approach like i did last time so i'm building the top floors first and then i'm just working my way uh, underneath this place because i really want to save as many props as i can and all these objects i just don't want to detail and just build uh, properly every single floor of these construction sites so i'm only doing what's going to be visible so obviously the topmost floors that are finished in this phase of the construction and underneath it just so it's going to look good when you just look at the construction site from various angles right so some of these uh, stairs in there and uh, for example these uh, these little openings or holes for uh, maybe like cranes or elevators obviously later when it's finished and uh, it's just going to it's just going to create like more structural you know support so that's it's not it's not just uh, it's not just uh, the pillars and it's just going to make it more interesting the construction site right now uh, i'm kind of going to cover this uh, excavation so you're not really going to see all the way to the bottom i'm going to keep some openings here and there and gonna later put some construction equipment in these places but uh, i actually decided that i want to unlike the previous episode i really decided that i want to have these buildings on this half of the construction site be in some later stages of the construction uh, it's not exactly like finished but uh, it's definitely built quite uh, high already a couple of floors above uh, above the surface 
As you can see, the style of the outline of the buildings is uh, the same as in the previous episode. So I'm using these, uh, I think, railway pillars or whatever for the really beefy pillars on the outline of the building and then connecting it with those uh, cables, uh, technically cables from, from the pack that adds, uh, that you can download from the workshop that adds all kinds of networks like beams and cables that you can use to build your own bridges or any kind of uh, structures like that. In here, I just use them for the outline of the floors of these buildings and obviously putting some smaller pillars inside the buildings like this and on the floors where they are just ending, those smaller pillars, I'm putting those like exposed rebar so that it's going to indicate that it's just not finished yet. Now this is very interesting, something that I that I was kind of figuring out for a long time. We needed to to treat this uh, railroad somehow because this is like a, uh, this is a railroad that's uh, already there probably before the construction you know started, and uh, we needed to somehow reinforce it because they will definitely uh, together with the project of the entire construction site and all those buildings, they will definitely build new pillars for this uh, elevated railroad. Now, before they do that, they need to somehow strengthen the entire structure, the bridge, because they didn't really want to build like a temporary bridge like they did with the tram, because uh, they just wanted to have these uh, trains in here operating even when the construction is just uh, you know happening. So I decided that uh, I'm going to get rid of the concrete pillars that used to be here, and I'm going to use these temporary, uh, temporary steel. Uh, pillars and I'm only going to put them on the slightly higher places in the construction site and when there where there is that uh, that uh, deeper excavation I'm going to just build some sort of a temporary steel structure to bridge over it I decided to use that uh, that truss beam again and uh, do it uh, do it underneath the railroad I'm not sure why what the reason might be there they obviously uh, couldn't build it uh, on the top maybe because it would be just too difficult or you know something it just looks all right like this and it was definitely easier to detail it uh, on the bottom like that it's a bit bright i don't exactly like the fact that it's very bright the the red or orange structure of that of that beam but uh, unfortunately there's nothing i can do about that when you convert it into procedural objects you can no longer use the painter mod and this is a very nice looking looking uh, beam for the bridge i'm probably going to use it some more uh, maybe even even in the Altengrad series because these kinds of structures are uh, not very common in the workshop uh, good looking ones so you know it's it's nice that we we have it and uh, like I said, it's just a temporary uh, structure to support that uh, already existing train bridge, okay? So uh, I'm just continuing with some of these floors. Uh, this is pretty much me just doing those floors that are going to be visible, but I'm not going to complete them like underneath the finished floors because they would not be visible in the cinematics in there and they would just eat into the prop limits, so I don't exactly want to do that. Now, when it comes to the structure, that's uh, pretty much finished. And now we are going to detail this entire site. And this is something that I really enjoyed doing because it, uh, it just breathed life into this entire place. Uh, doing this detailing, uh, these uh, like uh, temporary, I don't know, offices for the workers and engineers, whatever. And uh, all the construction equipment, as especially, especially when I did the cranes. That was that was a moment when the entire construction site just uh, became alive, right? Because uh, the cranes just really were needed in the construction site. And when I first positioned them, I was really happy that the construction site, uh, finally, it makes a lot more sense and it's just working. It's just working together with all these details. So it's just gonna be a couple of shots before I do those cranes. I'm already talking about them, but first we are just doing these details uh, all around the construction site. Now, for example, in here, I'm putting this mud. This was a very important detail, by the way, because uh, these uh, these walls that I'm using here, these retaining walls are keys, which means that uh, they have obviously the vertical surface and they also have the horizontal surface that's not exactly looking that great in this particular area. So I first covered it with just the ploppable uh, cliff texture, but that's not exactly like, you know, fitting in this area. So I decided to put only in some places I decided to put that uh, mud decal, but also I wanted to have the decal like sharply ending 
where the vertical you know face starts so i had to convert that decal into a procedural object and you probably know the drill already i'm just going to uh, just cut it where i want it to uh, these decals are kind of overlapped so maybe in the cinematics you will notice some some flickering of the textures but they are very similar and not exactly all that uh, uh, with different colors like it's just brown mud right so it's not going to be all that all that uh, visible and noticeable so it's fine and it's definitely looking good uh, in there and this is finally this is finally the cranes so uh, i decided to use two types of cranes i decided to use these japanese ones for the, the dollar ones inside the construction site and uh, i'm also using well these by the way don't come with uh, some sort of a base at least i didn't notice maybe they do so i had to use uh, those uh, modular uh, segments of a different type of crane to create like a base for these and then just use that uh, little climbing platform you know the platform that's used to just raise all the crane up and uh, create some sort of a like a like a connection between the different uh, different segments of the crane because they don't match they are different size so i had to i had to just uh, cover it somehow right and you can already see it in the time lapse that with these cranes, the entire construction site just looks thousand times better. And after that, it was just uh, just detailing, straightforward detailing, putting putting uh, really random stuff all around uh, the construction site. So, for example, some trucks going into the very deep areas of the construction site. Some of these mixers probably getting ready, waiting in line, getting ready to pour all the concrete into those. Uh, into those uh, pillars that are prepared in there, probably using the crane and all those little uh, yellow boxes for, for the fresh concrete. I'm not sure what they're called in English. And later I also put some of the lights in the construction site area and of course decals, lots, lots of decals, all kinds of stains and just dirt, just so it's going to look like a proper uh, dirty construction site, right? Even though that's probably not very futuristic, but uh, you know, uh, technology when it comes to just building stuff probably didn't change much all right so doing very similar detailing on the opposite side of the construction site again some kind of a storage with these temporary uh, buildings temporary offices i guess and for example nice little detail these uh, segments for the cranes when they're gonna decide that they're gonna make them uh, taller all right guys so that was all for today's episode i thank you for watching it hope you liked it if you did then you can always put a thumbs up underneath the video share the video with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you're new here and also if you want to directly support the channel you can become a channel member by clicking the join button below i will see you with some next videos take care enjoy the cinematics and goodbye